Hey folks, Ashley here, allthingsdentistry.com, and I'm just doing the voiceover for the apicoectomy. Uh, I'm running this at rabbit speed, 200%, so you're going to see the entire reflection. Wow. Hold on. So here I am uh, delicately elevating, starting to elevate the, uh, the flap with a, with a Woodson. Um, you doing this under the microscope. Points to note, I'm going through the papilla sparing incision right at that moment, and the way I made that was uh, a 45 degree angle at the base of the papilla, um, make the mucosa hemorrhage, and then back through with a sort of a intracellular esque incision straight to bone. I'm raising a full mucoperiosteal flap here, and you're going to notice here where that elevator goes, whoop, the Woodson goes easily underneath that flap. And I think the reason why is because I've been using a, sort of a hydroscopic um, dissection or flap elevation just to, I was taught in oral surgery to um, take your local anesthetic, place a bevel, make sure the needle's right underneath the periosteum or as close as you can get, and then inject. And that fluid uh, enables the um, lifting of the periosteum, making your flap elevation much easier. So here I'm just using a periosteal elevator. Things I'm looking for, uh, any dehiscence or fenestration on the root that's uh, in question, which is tooth number 10 or FDI 2.2. Um, making sure I'm getting sharp dissection, getting right down to the bone, getting that periosteum off the bone. This is a full mucoperiosteal flap. Um, also uh, hemorrhage. I used uh, lidocaine 2% with 1 in 50,000 just to control hemorrhage. Elevating that flap with uh, very delicate tissue, fairly friable. She's got a thin biotype, and furthermore, when I'm placing the uh, my retractor, make sure there's no tension.